Well, Moise says, Naeem, first of all, congratulations on your fascinating book, The End of Power. And let me reread the, re -read the subtitle, since I think it poses a great question. From boardrooms to battlefields and churches to states, why being in charge isn't what it used to be. So, Moise says, Naeem, why is being in charge in the 21st century not what it used to be? Because the barriers that shielded the powerful are becoming less protective. Now, every powerful institution, individual, army, religion, company, has something special that protects them, that shields them from others, from rivals, from challengers that want to take part of the power that the, the institution, the company, or the individual has. And, and they had barriers that protected them. Those barriers are being now easier to overwhelm, easier to circumvent or in, undermine. And is the combination of these three forces that are making power um, easier to acquire. But then once you have it, you can do less with it than your predecessors. And then it is more fleeting. It, uh, as it, you know, leaders and companies and those in power then uh, now have shorter, short, blah, 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 and it's easier to lose. Well, Moises Naim, I was also struck by a quote uh, from the former Brazilian President Fernando Henrique Cardoso, talking about the gap between real power and what people ex expect from people in positions like his, heads of state, then that that gap is a source of great frustration. Um, any, any head of state now is having um, more challenges. Governments are increasingly becoming like Gulliver's. Uh, giants uh, that are tied down by thousands of strings held by Lilliputians, by all kinds of organizations, uh, uh, activists and non-governmental organizations, and hedge funds and big money types that are move money internationally, or political parties at home, or new groups, or the media, or all kinds of forces that are limiting the ability of the executive, of the president of the country, to do what he or she wants. Uh, we have a process around the world of devolution, where power is shifting from the capital to state and local governments. We have also a, a, a process where in, central banks are becoming independent. So the head of the central bank, the governor of the central bank, very often can do whatever he or she wants without consulting the prime minister or president. Uh, we have, as I said, the media, we had all kinds of organizations, and we have a lot of fragmented govern uh, governments. In, by that, I mean governments uh, that are divided in the sense that uh, uh, those who hold the executive don't hold the parliament. And that has become the norm. Let me turn to Pam Dawkins for a question. In your book, you talk about the more revolution, the mobility revolution, and the mentality revolution as the um, three categories that indicate how power has changed. Um, will you explain this? Sure. The more revolution is my way of capturing uh, all of the factors that now make it easier for challengers to overwhelm the barriers uh, that protected the powerful. We live in a world uh, of more, uh, where there's more of everything. First of all, there are more people. It took all of history of humanity until 1950 to have two billion people in the world. Now we're seven billion, and we add about two billion people every 20 years or so. So we have more people than ever, but this also is the youngest planet than ever. This is a, a planet of very young people. Highly in, unevenly distributed, we have countries like Russia, Japan, or the United States where people, the population is getting older. But on average, we have now young, more, more young people than ever before in history. Um, and we have more urban people. Uh, this is the time in, 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 in human history where, m for the first time in 2007, more people live in cities than in uh, the, uh, uh, a rural setting in farms. Um, and not only we have more people, but we have more products and more countries and more armies and more political parties and more computers, weapons, more philanthropies, more people trying to do good. Look at any indicator of, uh, that traces what's happening to humanity, and you will see that it's skyrocketing in terms of size. There's more of everything. If you have more of everything, it's, more, it's harder. 
to control them. It's harder to dominate, uh, and that has consequences for power. And that's why I say that this is how uh, those that want to challenge the power that the incumbents have can overwhelm the barriers that protect them. But power is not just, there's not just more of everything, but the more that we have moves more. And that's the mobility revolution. And then there's, of course, the mentality. Right. The mobility revolution is very important because given that everything moves, not only people, but also ideas and pandemics and illnesses and money and products and ideas and terrorists and foundations and feel, everything moves. Power needs a captive audience. Power needs to have control over a territory, or has to have control. If that moves all the time, it's harder to exercise power. And that's the, 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 the importance of the mobility revolution. And then, as you say, there is the mentality revolution. We have a very profound change in values, in aspirations, in uh, expectations around the world. There's a fascinating example of this um, in India. Uh, the divorce rates among elderly couples are soaring. And that is mostly driven by the women. The women are deciding to walk away from marriages that they don't want to be in anymore. Many of those are arranged marriages because, of course, if you've been married 30, 40 years, 50 years in India, uh, it's very likely that that marriage was arranged. Well, that's a very profound uh, change. Uh, in tradition, in expectations, in, in, in values. And that those are not just anecdotes. We have uh, the, the World Values Survey is, is an effort that has been going now for decades in which uh, at the University of Michigan, there is a group of researchers that go around the world in a large number of countries and they ask people about their values, about their expectations. And just watching at what has happened with that is quite amazing in terms of the mentality revolution that then undermines the very basis of power. The notion that you do that because I say so, and you do that because that's the way it has always been done, those are phrases that carry no more power in, anymore. Uh, it's very hard to tell uh, someone, you do that because that's the way it has always been done. It's not a phrase that now generates a lot of response.